there's a very powerful feature on every track in Cakewalk and maybe you're not using it. So let's look at how to use the Pro Channel in Cakewalk to power up your mixes. So where do we find the Pro Channel in Cakewalk? Well, all you have to do is create any track. So I just created an audio track and then we can go up to views, console view, and you can see in here, there's a couple of ways we can access this. So if we scroll up a bit, you'll see Pro Channel right there and you can click on this and it opens up the Pro Channel right down here. Now here's the way that I prefer to use the Pro Channel. If you click on these arrows up here, it may look like this. You have to click on this little control right here and now we have the Pro Channel. By default, the Pro Channel is turned off and you can tell because this is not orange. If I were to click here, you can see it's orange and you can see down here, it's powered on the Pro Channel. But I don't have any modules in here powered on because you can see these aren't powered on. So if we wanted to turn on any of the modules, we could do that. And if you want to A-B test with and without the Pro Channel, you could just turn them all off by using this. So even though it shows that these are on, they're off because the entire Pro Channel is off. This is the default layout for the Pro Channel. You can see we have a compressor up here. It's an 1176 style compressor. Then it goes into an EQ. And then down here we have some tube saturation and then it goes into a console. And the console just adds some subtle harmonics, similar to if your signal was going through an actual hardware console. And the cool thing about this is there's three different types of consoles that you can choose from. There's the S type, which is an SSL style console. Then we can click on the N and that's a Neve style console. And then we click on A and that's a Trident style console. So you have three different flavors here and they're very subtle on their own, but it all adds up over the course of your mix. So if you were to put this console on every single track in your mix, it does add up and it's going to add some nice harmonics into your tracks. Be sure to use the same console type across all of your tracks. So if you decide to go with the Neve, be sure to switch all of them to the Neve and you want to make sure that this module is turned on. So again, this was the default setting. We can add more modules in here. There's more that we can add or we can rearrange these if we want. So we could have console at the top, maybe if that's what we want to do, or you could put it somewhere in the middle if you want. And one of the things that I really like about the Pro Channel is that I can emulate the old school hardware recording setup. So I can have everything go into the console, maybe put that at the top, and then we can add in a tape emulator down at the bottom here. So it's going through your console, going through some effects, and then it's all being recorded to tape, just like you used to do on the old console days. So as you just saw there, we added a module in very easily. Just click on this plus and you have your modules in here. So let's go through some of the modules that you're going to get with the Pro Channel. And then I'm going to tell you why I think that this can power up your mixes. So we already went over the console a bit. You know what it's about. Now the controls on here are kind of like a fader on an actual console, except this fader starts at minus six dB, so it doesn't go all the way down. That would be like your fader brought down to minus six dB on the console, and then it can go over zero. So by default, it's at zero, but you can go past zero, just like you can do on a console. So you can really drive the signal into there if you want. And then there's a trim, which would just trim the signal a bit. You can take away or add some more in there. And then you have this tolerance button. And I like to click it on. What this does is it makes every single pro channel in your project slightly different because every channel in an actual console may have some subtle differences. And this is just kind of going to give you a little bit of variety. Again, it's extremely subtle. All right, one more cool thing about the console module, then we'll move on to the others, is if we have another track in here, or you could have even more tracks, but you want to select all of your tracks. So you can hold down control on your computer keyboard and then select however many tracks you want. And then we'll go over to this here. Turn on our console. And with however many tracks you have selected, you hold down control on your computer keyboard. You adjust a setting like maybe this, and we'll go look at our other track here. And you can see it's changed that. Now, maybe we want to turn the tolerance on for all of them. So hold down control on your computer keyboard, click that. And if we look over at the other one, 
it's on there as well. Maybe we want to go back with this. And there you go. It's the same on both of these. So you can control both of those faders at the same time or the tolerance or the trim, whatever you want, just by holding control down on your computer keyboard, which I thought was a very cool thing. Now let's look at some of the other modules. So like I said, you have your 1176 style compressor, but you also get a LA-2A style compressor in here as well. And if you're like me, I like to have a LA-2A after my FET compressor. So you can do that in here. And there it is. It's going to behave like a LA-2A optical compressor. You have compress or limit, and then you can drive the signal through however you want. Another thing you can see we can do in here is kind of collapse that. So it's still there, but it's just kind of out of our way. A quick look at our EQ, you can see we have four main bands here, and then you have your high pass and low pass filters down at the bottom. It's fairly straightforward. Up along the top, you can change the style. So you have hybrid, pure, E-type, which is your SSL E-type or SSL G-type EQ. So that's kind of neat. Then down here, we have our tube saturation. So that's going to put your signal through a tube stage and you can turn that on or off if you like, or just get rid of it all together by right clicking, remove module. So what else do we have in here? We have Breverb 2, and this is an excellent reverb plugin. And you can see you have a lot of presets in this reverb right there. And then you can adjust things however you want in here. This is a great reverb. It's really nice that they've included it as a module because you can also access it as a plugin as well in Cakewalk. And with pretty much all of these modules, if we click over here, you can see we have presets in here. So if this was a bass guitar, I could maybe use that and you can see it's a preset and you can do that with several of the modules in here as long as they have presets. And then there's presets for the entire channel strip altogether. So you could click up here, click on that little folder, and it brings you to the Pro Channel presets. You can see there's lots of different things in there that you can choose from, and it's going to change everything in there to whatever settings it thinks suit whatever you decide to choose. Let's look back into the modules here. We have Rematrix Solo, which is a convolution style reverb. You have the soft tube saturation knob. You might be familiar with that plugin because you can get it for free, but you can include that into your pro channel if you want. Very easy saturation. Let's look at what else we got in here. You have another reverb there than that tape emulator that we looked at earlier. We'll just have a deeper look at it. You can see we can add tape noise. You can increase the recording level and then bring down the output level, which kind of gives it that tape saturation. You can use a lesser quality tape if you want, or an older style tape, and you can change the bias if you want. So it's just kind of a nice, simple tape saturation plugin. And then some more that we have in here is the effects chain. So if you include that in there, you can bring in any of your VST effects into your pro channel. So you have access to all of your effects and you can put them right into your pro channel and you can have them before or after any of these and you can have multiple instances of the effects chain in there so it really makes this pro channel extremely powerful and then there's a few other little things in here we have these what they call style dial effects and they're just like one knob effects that do one thing and there's various ones in here you can play around with those if you like so how is this pro channel going to power up your mixes? We kind of looked at it earlier is you can save these entire channel strips. So you click up here and if you wanted to save this channel strip, you would click in here and call it whatever you want. And then say this is a killer vocal chain that you've used and you want to use it on even more tracks. You can now do that. You can save it once and then quickly load it up onto as many projects as you want. 
So there's a nice power up right there. And maybe you're working on an album or an EP and you want to keep the same sort of sound across all of your tracks. So you would just save your entire chains for your bass, your drums, your guitars, whatever you have in your songs. You could save those entire chains and quickly load them up into every project on your EP or album, whatever it is you're creating. And you're going to have that same sort of sound. It's going to make mixing very easy and very quick. A lot of us don't have time to work on music, so this is going to speed up that whole process for you. Now, did you know that Cakewalk has a matrix view similar to Ableton Live's Clip Launcher? Well, it does. Click on the video on the screen if you want to learn more about that. It's an excellent feature. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. If you've ever gone into the comments, I'm always saying, Keep creating and then I'll do a little fist bump and a thumbs up. So keep creating.